Welcome to our first ever stream in the Road to Success speaker series. I wanted to thank everyone uh, for taking the time out of their schedule to be here with us today. Uh, my name is Lucas Conyer. I'm an enabling specialist here at ShopMonkey, and I'll be the one kicking off the event today. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong automotive enthusiast. Uh, at one point, wanted to be a mechanic. I was, a, I was definitely pursuing that, but I just really enjoy uh, what is going on in the automotive industry, how things are growing and evolving, uh, and really excited to be here with Philip and the team to be presenting this topic uh, to the audience. So um, this series has been put together with the goal of helping other shop owners across the industry by addressing popular topics and sharing best practices. Um, we here at ShopMonkey, we have an amazing customer base. Uh, they share the same passion in wanting to help the automotive industry. Uh, and we're looking forward to presenting these sessions over the next few months. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to be we're going to have more hosted throughout the year. Uh, we'll make sure to send out communications when those are coming out. Now, um, we do want to call out that, you know, we, we will be bringing shops in from various verticals of the automotive industry. Uh, and we do know that, you know, maybe not one size fits all when it comes to different types of shops. Uh, so we're, we're well aware of that. You know, we, we know there's a lot of general automotive shops out there. We have detailed uh, tint, PPF. Uh, we have performance four by four shops. And I think it's really fascinating how diverse the industry is. Uh, and we think that, you know, seeing what others are doing regardless of the vertical uh, can help spark ideas and you know get you on your own road to success with information like this so with that being said uh, we're here to kick off our road to success series with philip from titan motoring to present today's topic the road to profits with shop processes and efficiency now uh, before i hand over the mic to phil who is Philip? Well, Philip Lindsay is the Lindsley is the CEO of Titan Motoring in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Titan Motoring started in 2011 as a mobile dealership services company, and they started off with one single van. Uh, now, after they landed CarMax as their customer, Titan quickly grew to their first retail location in 2013. And after working seven day weeks for two years, if not more than two years, Philip, there, um, you know, they moved to a current 15,000 square foot location in 2015. Since then, they've grown to 34 employees. They've been the 2022 Mobile Electronics Association Retailer of the Year and grossed over $10 million in sales for 2022. Philip, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm going to pass the mic over to you. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I'm glad to be here and, and, you know, Shop Monkey's been such an integral part of our growth. And so anytime you guys ask me to, you know, talk about it, good, good, bad, ugly, I'm, I'm happy to do it. So uh, this was actually a, a class that I, I taught for a Mobile Electronics Association, uh, an event that called Knowledge Fest. Um, so I was asked to speak on, on these uh, subjects. Um, and it was kind of natural for, um, for Shop Monkey and our management software to be part of that. Um, and so, so this was kind of a, a snippet of that class uh, where we just talk about some of the things that we've been forced to do, really, because um, uh, it's not a lot of our natural tendencies to uh, put processes in place until you desperately need them. Uh, I know I speak for myself on that. Um, so it's come out of necessity. Uh, and so we, you know, a lot of shops are... Um, you know, the last couple of few years have been been busy for for custom shops and automotive shops, which is good. Uh, but it's really put um, some importance on having processes in place to, you know, make sure that you're being efficient with your time uh, and ultimately, you know, be profitable. I mean, that's that's the goal um, with with all this. So, um, so yeah. So we'll get into some of that. I'll go over these. Will be kind of the four main points. Um, so first, we'll hit up uh, we'll hit up software, uh, which seems to be a pretty good fit for. Uh, for, for for this right now so you know people are using all different kind of stuff and i don't know you know whoever's on this call as far as if they're currently using shop monkey or looking at shop monkey uh, and we're not going to make this an infomercial that's not really what this is about um and in this class i just like use something you know i got uh, other shop owners or friends that are i mean still using paper or uh you know really basic ways um to manage their shop whether it's two employees or 200, it really doesn't matter. Um, you just got to be using some management and it becomes more and more necessary as you grow. Uh, and we've, we've, you know, really needed it as we've grown over the, over the last couple of years and really seen a lot of these other ones just fall short. Uh, we were using 
six different programs basically uh, simultaneously between Google Calendar and you know QuickBooks Back Office and all these different things, paper check-ins. Um, so you really got to have something digital. That's obviously everything's digital now. It's all going to the digital age. Uh, and so we looked at all the different ones. Um, and we decided to go with Shop Monkey simply for the fact that it combines so many different things into one, uh, uh, as opposed to using all of these different things, as well as mobile. Um, and we'll get into some of that, but we do a lot of dealers uh, across three different states. Uh, and so having the ability for somebody to check in a vehicle via their phone uh, or do things on the road uh, became very, very important. So uh, I know when I was looking at different ones and, and over the years, like oh man this cost you know when we were much smaller five people ten people um you know it was always a cost thing i was always so focused on cost uh and and just the immediate cost for software and not really looking at how much time uh and and money was i losing uh and which time is money um in, in using all these different ones or not using them at all um and and it came to the forefront when as we continued to grow that we needed to have something you know, much more uh, robust to make sure that we were being as efficient as possible. It became, again, out of necessity. So, um, so yeah, so that's why we decided to go with, with Shot Monkey. So uh, hit that next slide for me. Um, so, you know, the, the biggest thing that we love about uh, the one that we chose, which was Shot Monkey, um, is we have a full workflow that I can really very quickly kind of see everything that we have going on. Um, one of the later slides we'll get into kind of, uh, I have a screenshot, I think, of our actual um, Shop Monkey uh, and the way that we've customized it to work for us. It's one of the reasons I love it uh, is you can really make it work for you um, with columns and, you know, we've even played with different ones. We've changed the way we've used it. But the point is, is it can be it can be changed um, to really work for you. So we have all our sales guys have columns with their tickets they're kind of building or working on but haven't closed the deal yet. Uh, or they need to order parts or anything that still needs action from them. Uh, and then we have ones like scheduled uh, projects here, daily in progress, and then of course completed. Um, so you can add and take away columns. That's one of the things we've really loved about it. Um, in the inventory tracking being integrated has been been amazing um, and the way we can assign purchase orders straight from uh, shop monkey for purchasing um, and our inventory tracking the way we can just search right from a part line you know guys know you know hey i don't know the whole part number or the whole thing but i remember it was you know this line in that brand and they can type that line name in and it'll pull up all those uh, that are in that line so the searching and, and inventory has been uh, pretty awesome um, and saved a ton of time uh, where we can generate tickets very, very quickly. Um, and then also, obviously, multiple users. Uh, all our techs have logins. Service riders have logins. Um, our drivers that pick up and drop off cars have logins. So we can really know who is doing what. Uh, and there's some accountability there. So if it's like a Oh, I didn't, I didn't do that to that ticket. You know, you get that all the time, right? Like, well, it actually shows there's a log of who, who was in that ticket, who moved things around. Uh, so it really has some accountability, um, as opposed to trying to figure out where a mistake was made and, and not really knowing, uh, with the goal of, of just eliminating those errors in the future. It's worked really, really well. Um, the biggest thing, uh, or one of the, there's so many big things, but one of the biggest things is the, the vehicle inspection. So, uh, I mentioned that we were doing a lot of dealership work. Um, you know, if you're driving a car, picking it up from a dealership, bringing it back to your shop, it really becomes necessary to have, um, you know, to eliminate the, the risk there, uh, you know, dealers, are, oh, that scratch wasn't there, uh, that, that wasn't there when we gave it to you. And so we're able to take pictures all the way around the vehicle, post them uh, and send those to, to our dealer contact before we ever take the car off the lot. So, um, you know, oh, that wasn't there. Well, it's actually still in your lot and you can see it in the picture. So the, um, you know, cutting out those liabilities uh, and not paying for, for dumb stuff, um, you know, scratching something or something you didn't even do, uh, but you don't have a way to prove it wasn't you. Um, those things uh, add up over time. Um, and I know that uh, the, the shop owner that I actually taught this class at Knowledge Fest, uh, he determined before he started doing photo check-ins the year before that in incidentals, so 
hey, that scratch wasn't there. Hey, that that wasn't that mark wasn't there. And paying to fix those because they didn't have any proof that it wasn't them. That the year before he started doing inspections, you know, photo inspections, that he spent ninety two thousand uh, dollars the previous year on incidentals. Uh, and I don't know about any of you guys, but uh, ninety two thousand dollars that just extra to have for whatever you want to spend that on equipment or a vacation or hiring the right person. People talk about hiring, you know, having that money to pay people uh, to, to invest in your business. You know, that's, that's not a small amount of money. So uh, super important to get rid of those liabilities and have them all in the ticket and sent to the client. The level of professionalism is just uh, it's unmatched. So uh, we've really enjoyed that, uh, those digital uh, vehicle inspections. Um, so yeah, so hit that next one. So we're um, one of the things. This thing says fast estimates, and and I want to elaborate on that um, for you guys that don't use ShopMonkey or don't use this part of ShopMonkey. If you currently use ShopMonkey, so we're able to do canned services. So uh, it has made where we can do estimates so quickly, uh, and and we do uh, just kind of a quick overview. So so my shop type motoring, we do a lot. We do vinyl wraps and window tint and full audio builds, uh, sprinter builds, front to back. We do all these things. Uh, and some of the jobs we do are, are very detailed and have a lot of lines of labor and product and, and materials. Um, but some of them we do more than once. So uh, I'll just give you an example. So a blackout on a new Cadillac Escalade. So there's a sport model Escalade that all, has all black trim and everything's black on it. Cadillac couldn't get them for a long time. So they would call us and they would want us to black out all that trim. Well, there's a lot of lines on there. You got lines for taking each piece off, putting it back on, epoxying it, painting it, wrapping it, whatever it was. Well, this, this ticket might have 25 to 30 lines of, of uh, material and parts and whatnot and labor. Um, and so basically, if you generate a ticket one time, and you want to do that job again, or even not the same exact job, but something very similar, you can go back to your original ticket, one that's been closed out and done deal and archived, and it's you know, paid three months ago, six months ago, doesn't matter. And you can can that entire ticket or that one job as part of that ticket. And then you can literally just go into a new ticket and pull that entire thing up. Um, or you can duplicate a ticket. You can duplicate one word, you know, word for word and then edit it and do whatever you want to do to it. So the we have now CAN services for a lot of our most common things where a t you know could take 20, 30, 45 minutes to generate a ticket. Uh, and now tech can do it in three minutes. I mean, the amount of time savings there has been huge. It's, it's one of my favorite things about it. Um, and I keep saying, I keep moving and saying, this is my favorite thing. Oh, wait, no, this is my favorite thing. Because uh, <laughs> I see the next one. Um, so two-way text and email. So so we've had two situations over the last couple of years. One, you have an employee that leaves, right? And they were using their cell phone to communicate with, with your clients. Uh, and now they have all your customer information in their phone. So if they go to another shop, they open their own shop. Well, now they have all that information. They can call your clients, say, hey, come over here. Uh, and so and we, that's happened to us, uh, as well as as an owner getting texts and calls at 10 o'clock at night, hey, my car, this, that, whatever. Um, and so we don't do that anymore. So now all communication happens through ShopMonkey via text and email. Uh, we took uh, cell phone numbers off of business cards. They're no longer on there. Um, and so now not only do my employees not have my proprietary customer information, uh, but we're also not getting calls and texts on my personal phone at 10 o'clock at night or having a secondary business phone. It's just not necessary. So, um, so now that's my now favorite one that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> so there's, there's so many. Um, so, but that's been huge. Uh, and a lot of us don't think about, you know, our employees having our customer information until it's too late and they're no, no longer there. And you hear that they've, you know, uh, po poached some of your clients. So, uh, so that's been a big one. Um, uh, this next one. So automated appointment reminder. So we used to have about 25% of our appointments not show up. So it was about one out of every four. Um, and when that was, this was four or five years ago. And then I started having my office manager call all the appointments the day before. Well, as we've grown, we typically will have anywhere between 20 to 40 appointments a day. So she was spending 
an hour ish, you know, hour, hour and a half calling all those people. Now we saw our, them, our missed appointments or canceled appointments go down significantly, obviously, but she was spending a lot of time doing that. Uh, and again, time is money. So uh, these are all automated. As soon as you set the customer appointment, they're going to get a notice automatically the day before. So right there, now she doesn't have to do that anymore. So say it was an hour a day, that's now five hours uh, that that one employee can spend doing other things for the business. So uh, that efficiency right there has been has been huge. Um, the photos and videos, I uh, go back to that last one, the, the, the last so the, the photos and videos on the bottom of that. So obviously we talked about check-ins. That's, you know, that's what it is. Uh, it was pretty self-explanatory. But we're able to um, not only the tech can add pictures in internal notes for, hey, this is where I mounted this. Hey, this is a behind the scenes picture. Uh, if you want to show that to your client, uh, this is where we, you know, in, anything that the tech wants to communicate or we want to show the client before we put something back together so they can really see what's going on behind the scenes of their vehicle. Uh, this has been huge and people really love it. Um, and, and just multiple people have come in and said the level of communication and professionalism that they've seen strictly because of, of us using ShopMonkey. I uh, just, I can't even count how many times that's happened. So it's, uh, it's pretty neat. So uh, internal notes and photos and videos have been, have been awesome. Um, so yeah, next slide. Um, so uh, this, uh, I'm going to say it again. So this, this is one of my favorite things. So, uh, so I, I, you can turn on notifications from shop monkey is as much or as little as you want. So I have payments notifications turned on. So I get a text message when somebody makes a payment. Um, and I, I mean, I've been at dinner at, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night and I've, you know, $35,000 deposited on a $70,000 job or 10, whatever. Uh, and, you know, put a big old smile on my face. So, um, so, but the fact that clients, you know, what, what's happened is, is the amount of time that people are interacting with, um, my, my sales guys are interacting with clients at my counter has gone down. Number one, we can send them the investor, we get all their info and we can email text it to them. And so they don't have to sit there while we build their estimate. Uh, number one, number two, they can look at it from the comfort of their home that night. So the amount of, it's like we're open all day. It's like we're open 24 seven. So we get deposits where, you know, a husband came in, got a quote, we emailed and texted to him and he's sitting at home with his wife at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, sitting on the couch and showing his wife the quote. And she's like, you know what? You know, I love you, babe. You should just do that for your truck. I think you you deserve it. And so 10 o'clock, boom, deposits. So the amount of deposits that we've had after hours is insane. We probably have 50% of our um, ones that don't happen in the store. Probably 50% of them happen after our business hours. Um, so that's been huge. Um, a lot of people and guys that use QuickBooks have, have asked me like, you know, hey, can this, you know, integrate with my my QuickBooks back office and all that. Um, and all that stuff has, has been integrated at this point. So that's been really nice. Um, the the reporting uh, and data that's in ShopMonkey has been really, really good uh, just to keep track of metrics right there at your fingers. And of course, we do dealers. So anybody that does dealer work knows that you know, you got to have customer aging and be able to send statements and all that. So that was one of our top kind of five things that we needed to have with the new new setup. So uh, it works great. Um, and, you know, I haven't I haven't seen anything lacking um, with that. So um, it's really got all the info we need. So uh, hit that next one for me there, Lucas. Um, all right. So. Employee handbooks. So, uh, you know, the question is who has one and who doesn't. And uh, it's, it's normally a pretty even split. Um, Lucas, you want to do a poll for this? All right, you know, let's do a poll. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to know who has one and who doesn't. Uh, and if you don't, don't feel bad about it. I didn't have one. I mean, we're 12 years in business. We didn't have one for seven years of those or maybe, you know, give or take. Um, but I'd be interested to know. Um, and now I'm going to talk about why we need them. And, and if you don't already know, um, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is, you know, why are they important? Right. So mitigating risks, um, 
eliminating gray area. That's the biggest thing, right? So we always have employees, uh, team members come up and, oh, I didn't know that's what I was supposed to do. Or, you know, I didn't know I needed to notify you two weeks before time off. You know, I just figured I could tell you whenever. So eliminating that gray area, have everything black and white, uh, really assigning clear responsibilities to people and make sure they know what their job is and what it isn't. Um, that's been a big one. Um, and a lot of you guys might not know this, but a lot of payroll companies will actually write you a handbook. Uh, they all have a template. Um, is it going to be perfect? Is it going to have everything you would want it to have? No, but it'll get you started if you don't have one. Um, and it's literally, you know, they'll ask you a bunch of questions. 50-50, man, I called it. Yeah. So we're 50-50. So that, that's about what I expected. Um, so the, the, um, even the 50 that has them, uh, that this can help you, right? So employee handbook should always be evolving. You, you know, hey, this pops up, that needs to make it in the in the handbook. Um, but payroll companies will generate one. They'll have like a fill in the blank thing for you, uh, where you kind of put what your you know time off is and paid vacation stuff and all of those things, and they will literally generate you one. Uh, and again, it won't be perfect, but it at least gets you one, and then you can build on that uh, as you grow. So. Um, so let's let's look at some of the goals in employee handbooks. Um, so I talked some about this. So you know, clear job descriptions. Uh, one of the things that I've kind of realized as as a, you know leading this business is that you know if, if if people pop up and don't know what their job is or think that this is their responsibility, if they don't know that, then that is our fault. That is that is your fault as a leader or manager. Um, to not make sure that everybody has clear expectations for that stuff. So, um, and we're still working through that. I mean, ours is not complete. We've, we've got a lot of different departments, a lot of different job descriptions, responsibilities. Uh, and so ours is even, you know, lacking on that. Um, so, you know, that's always something, again, all of this you're going to continue to be working on and building, just get one and then grow it and build it and add to it. Uh, dress code. So, so I have a dress code here. Uh, it's fairly, you know, we're, we're not a, we're, this isn't a doctor's office. We're not wearing suits and ties, but, um, you know, we do black pants, uh, black or gray pants, black or gray shoes, and then, you know, tighten shirt, sweatshirt. Um, and so having a dress code, if you want people to look, you know, similar or, or not be wearing gym shorts or whatever it is, um, all that stuff needs to be in your dress code. Uh, and obviously PTO, vacation, and sick time, sick time policies. Um, uh, benefits, what they are or are not. Uh, and then what's the pay rate raise schedule? Um, so this was one that actually came to my attention from who I taught this class with. So I didn't have this in my, uh, in my, in my, uh, employee handbook. So, you know, people would come up like, Hey, uh, I think I need a raise, you know, um, which, which that happens. Um, so this can be like, Hey, after 90 days, you get an evaluation after, a year or whatever that looks like, whatever you want that to be. So it is black and white so that you're not getting people coming up asking all the time, Hey, when do I get a raise? Hey, when do I get a raise? Um, so just eliminating that gray area and setting expectations. People know, Hey, I got to be here for this long before I can ask for a raise. Um, and then this is a big one too, the negligent damages uh, and phone policy. So, um, you know, uh, Jamil from Traffic James, who I taught this class with, he's got a great negligent damages uh, policy um, that I'm in, working on integrating into my uh, employee handbook where, you know, first time is on the shop, second time is, is uh, you know, is 50-50, and then third time it's 100% on the employee to pay for those negligent damages. Uh, he's got a really good one. Phone policy. This is a hot button for for shops. You know, I got shop owners who are like, I don't allow my employees to have phones in my shop. You know, they leave in their car. Uh, we're a split level shop. We got upstairs, downstairs. We communicate with our phones. Um, I just, you know, handle those individually if it's an issue. Uh, but I just feel like, you know, you trust your employees to to not be on their phone all day. And if they are, then they they should be there. You know. Um, so everybody's got their different. But the point is, is to just eliminate that gray area uh, and make sure everything's in black and white. That's the goal of the, of the handbook. So, um, yeah, let's see that next slide, Lucas. All right, so so this is one of our um, operating procedures that's over here on the right. Um, and a lot of you guys might have seen this kind of triangle before that kind of, you know, policy dictates process and then procedure. 
Um, so this is our for our sales staff. Uh, this is just a little snippet, first page. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like. So, you know, just kind of gives you the overview of what your job is, um, you know, the scope of what it's going to be so that you kind of know what to expect. And then it's going to get more detailed from there as far as, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, I don't know if any guys, I'm sure, I'm sure people have had people come up and go, well, that's not my job. You know, that's a, that's a, a text love to say that, or, or, or front guys love to say that. Um, and so this is, well, no, it is, it's right there on the, on the, on the standard operating procedure. So, um, the more you have this stuff iced out and, and black and white, the less time somebody will come up and say, that's not my job. Um, and, and if they do, then they haven't read this, which that's another problem. <laughs> that needs to be a, an individual employee meeting. So, um, so anyway, so, uh, this is really good. And, and again, I don't even have all these done for my business. Um, We've added departments, um, added stuff that we're doing. And so we have to create that you know, new and we add a new service uh, because we do about about 12 different things in this building. Um, so it could be much simpler if you're just a straight mechanic shop. Um, you got techs, you got, you know, um, you got a tire guy, you got a tire procedure, you got a alignment guy, alignment procedure, whatever those look like uh, for your particular business, just having them um, and evolving them regularly, uh, usually 60 to 90 days if anything needs to change. I'd say looking at them every 60 days is, is very good uh, because things are going to change, right? Um, and you can literally update those or, or no changes if there's no changes. But just staying on top of those because um, things are going to evolve and change. Obviously, as your business evolves and changes. So um, let's hit that next one, Lucas. All right. So... This is uh, our vehicle check-in on ShopMonkey. Uh, for any of you guys that haven't seen it, uh, or if you're not using the inspections and you do use ShopMonkey, which would be surprising. Um, so this is kind of on the left here, you're going to see uh, kind of what, um, what our check-in looks like to a tech. So they're basically going to go in, no damage. They're going to do pictures. Ours have actually evolved since even this picture. So now our, our standard check-in is going to have descriptions under each thing of what a, a tech needs to be taking pictures of um, just because, you know, again, things evolve, right? We've had, you know, a scratch on the inside of a back hatch of an SUV. Well, we weren't taking pictures of that, right? So, um, you know, smoothed it over with the client, had to handle that, but now we're, you know, a lot more pictures. Uh, and so now we have descriptions under each one of those. When they pull, when a tech pulls it up, it tells them all the areas they need to be taking pictures of. Uh, then the next picture over with, the, with our helmet there, uh, our Titan helmet, that is going to be the uh, email text that, uh, email and or text that, the client gets from us. So basically saying, Hey, we've done an inspection of your car. Um, this has got everything in it. And then when they click on that over on the right, that's going to be what they see. So that's going to be all the pictures, uh, any damages notated, anything that they need to authorize saying, Hey, we're aware of that. Um, and so when they get that and it sends it to them, it has a time and date stamp. So if it's like, Hey, that one there, well, you dropped your car off seven minutes ago. 30 minutes or whatever. Um, so the, the amount of people that have just said that they felt more comfortable with their car, like this one in this inspection was a, a 2018 McLaren, you know, high end vehicles, uh, you know, picky clients, these are their babies. Some of these cars are, you know, their second biggest investment, you know, above beyond their house. Um, and so the, them feeling comfortable um, is, is this, that level of, of, of professionalism uh, is really achieved by doing this. Um, and the fact that it's all integrated in the other cool part, a lot of you guys, even the use shop monkey uh, might not know this. You can print out their receipt with all of this on it. So when, when you get done, it can have all your met, it can, it can have or not have all your messages that you have exchanged back and forth, the inspection, everything in the printout that you give them, um, so they can really see everything that's been done since the vehicle's been there and all the communication. So, uh, pretty cool. It's been, uh, it's been a game changer for us. Um, 
So, you know, we're talking about profit, right? Um, and and the, this is the, the road to profit, road to success, um, which I, I think is the same, same thing, right? Uh, in my eyes. Um, so a lot of questions that we've had across um, when I've been teaching this class is labor rates. So, you know, oh, labor rates, oh, I can't charge that in my area or, you know, that's too much. We, we can't charge that much, you know, where we are. So the, generally the question that I ask uh, when, I, when, I, when I get told that is, do you have a Mercedes dealership in your market? And I think just about everybody has said yes. Uh, and then I said, well, do you know what their hourly rate is? Um, most of the shops uh, are, you know, most of our shops are, you know, high level. If you're getting to the point where you're using Shop Monkey or a similar, you're, you're professional, right? I mean, this is a professional level software for professional shops. Um, and so you should be charging accordingly. Um, I'm not saying you need to charge what a Mercedes Benz dealership charges, but uh, use that as a metric for what you're, what you're going to charge. Um, you know, I've, I've, the biggest thing is really looking at those numbers, you know, what your, what your overhead is, what your employee payroll is and all of that, and make sure that you're profitable. None of, none of this matters if you're not being profitable. Um, Got to be in the green. Um, Shop Monkey wants to see you in the green. You know, if you want to pay for their software on a monthly basis, they need to see you making money. Um, so it's a mutually beneficial for everybody. Uh, and obviously, you know, you as a business owner or manager uh, to, to be making money. That's the whole goal. Um, so really look at those dealerships in your area uh, and, and use that as a metric to, to determine what you're going to charge. Um, it should really, the, you know, your labor rate should you know, be profitable for you to grow your company. Uh, I heard one of the comments at the beginning was, you know, hire qualified employees. Um, as we've grown to, you know, mid 30 employees, 30, 33, 34, wherever we're at right now. Um, I ask people, people ask me all the time, like, man, how you hire, how you get these guys? How are you hiring these qualified guys? And the bottom line is, is that I haven't really had a problem with that because we pay according. Um, and provide a professional place for people to work. Uh, and so if for you to do that uh, from a business perspective, you need to be charging accordingly or you can't pay your guys accordingly. So if you want qualified techs, um, you need to be charging accordingly. So so these are our shop labor rates. Uh, they're on the bottom there. Um, so we, again, we do a lot of dealership work. Uh, so we have a wholesale rate for car dealers. Um, that's 119 an hour. Uh, we have a preferred hourly rate. That is, you buy whatever we're putting in from us. So you bought your radio from us, your suspension, wheels, tires, whatever it may be. Um, that's your purchasing from us. Uh, and then we have a standard rate, which is if you buy your stuff online or elsewhere, uh, we will still install it, but you don't get our preferred rate. Um, some shops won't even install supplied parts. I get that. Um, that's a debate goes back and forth. Um, we've done well by saying that we'll, we'll put it in and we will charge accordingly. It's not our preferred rate. Uh, you also don't get our lifetime install warranty. And um, a lot of times those conversations turn into them just end up buying their stuff from us and sending their stuff back. But uh, but we entertain those conversations. So um uh other shop rates out uh yeah i'd love to know what other shop rates are out there that's a great question um i think we're about average uh i've you know i found out when i taught this class last time that uh down in atlanta he was charging charging more than us um so we're we're going to be looking at our shop rates again um but yeah i think that you know 140 to 180 an hour i think is going to be the the average um and so that's you know but again, it, it, it's determined for your market, your overhead, uh, and you just need to make sure that you're profitable. So if, if 140, you're profitable, you're making money, you're doing good, paying guys good, good living wages, um, then, that, then that's good. If, if in your market and your overhead, it needs to be 180, then that's what it needs to be. Um, but you need to be providing that that atmosphere for a 180 an hour shop. You know, you can't have trash everywhere and say you're 180 an hour. That's just not the way it works. So. Uh, there's there's a lot more to to that. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, hit that next one, Lucas. So this is this and it, and later is now. So um, uh, so you know, <laughs> I I hope that uh, the shop down the street is um, is not on this because uh, this is a picture of their showroom. <laughs> um, 
So, you know, and, and they're a 75 an hour shot. And, you know, when I, this picture gives me anxiety. Um, uh, and if any guys, you know, pop up type motoring online or look at our, our Google pictures, this is not what our showroom looks like. Um, ours doesn't really look like a showroom. We've got, you know, couches and epoxy floors and we don't have product hardly anywhere. Um, and that's just what I've, the look I've gone for. But, um, you know, if you're going to be charging those rates, make sure that your image and your brand and your showroom and your bathrooms uh, reflect that. Um, we just redid our bathroom. I had one of the females in the business redo the bathroom because they have that kind of eye uh, to where if we have people come in our shop and they go use our restroom, it does not look like an auto shop bathroom. Um, it has got hand towels. And as you guys know that are married, you don't touch the hand towels. They're not for touching. They're just for looks. Um, uh, matter of fact, that's what the female here told us that don't touch the hand towels. They're not for those just for looks. Um, so, but, but pay attention to all that stuff, the details. Um, there's a, uh, a lady named Kimberly trainer owns another audio shop, um, that she taught a class on showroom design, uh, about the five senses. It was, it was really great class, um, about, you know, what is your shop? What does your showroom smell like? You know, does it, does it have food smells and this and that it was very interesting and stuff that you just don't necessarily think about um uh and just really paying attention to those five senses you know what are people seeing hearing smelling all that stuff so uh it's good to pay attention to that stuff especially if you're trying to charge a premium rate that stuff is very important so um uh, yeah let's get that picture out of here oh there's our shop uh so that's our showroom um it's evolved a little bit since since this picture this is a little bit old picture but you get the gist um uh you know clean we don't have a lot of product anywhere um people feel comfortable spending uh spending that so um and then i think this next picture if you go to the next slide uh so that's a lamborghini dealership so that this is this is my goal <laughs> um you know i'd love to be able to charge 250 an hour uh but my showroom doesn't look like this so it's it's close so maybe but um uh, but they're, you know, really look at car dealerships. Uh, it's a good, good metric. Um, car dealerships have it down um, from a showroom perspective, a cleanliness perspective. Um, and that's why these dealerships, you know, get are getting 180, 200, 250. Uh, there was, uh, I had somebody raise their hand in one of my classes and tell me that um, uh, the Bentley dealership in their area was currently charging $329 per hour. Um, and they can get it, you know? So, uh, and I guarantee you their, their facility in the back, in the front, it was all probably pristine. So, um, you know, if you want to be at that level, you got to make everything else at that level. And then it just kind of comes. So, you know, what changes investments do you need to make to get you there? Um, and stair step it. You don't have to do this and charge two fifty an hour all of a sudden. Uh, but if you're at one thirty and you want to be at one fifty, make some changes, clean some stuff up, uh, walk around your, you know, be be your customer, walk around your showroom, and uh, get it get it where you think it needs to be, even if it's one step at a time. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's hit that next one. Philip, great question in the chat. I don't know if you want to just uh, address it. I, I'll, I'll just bring it up. It was, uh, sure. do, you do you prefer no inventory in the showroom or just high-end displays? That was Stephen had brought up a great question. Um, so I'll, I'll answer it this way. I've seen a shop that has product on their showroom and on their show floor, and they did a really good job of the way that they have it. Um, then I'm not opposed to that. Me personally, uh, we have just chosen high-end displays. That's for our business, right? So all the, you know, there might be multiple different kinds of businesses that are on this on this call, um, and that might not necessarily work for you. Uh, but you know, having bins of trinkets and things like that, like that's you know, you can do those if you do them in a professional way. Uh, but if like a, but that first picture of that shop, it just gives me anxiety. You know, I can't. I can't do it. I, I would, it's, it, if it's stressing me out, it's stressing clients out. Um, and so, you know, you just want to, you, you know, I don't want, you want to have stuff that makes you money where people know that you have it. So I get that. Um, but you just need to be smart about it. Right. So uh, if you have product that needs to be displayed, making sure that it's, 
you know, clean and it's, you know, dust free and you have it in an organized way and not just all over the place um, because nobody, uh, you don't want a customer with anxiety. Customers with anxiety don't, don't spend top money on tickets. And I'm sure there's some loss prevention in there as well, right? More inventory on the floor, a little more risk as well. So I could see that playing a little bit into the decision. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. All right. So this is another uh, uh, hot point for me. Um, uh, Lucas, can you pop a, a, a poll up for this? Would that be a big deal? Or would that take a little bit of time? Can, can we, we pop a poll up to see if we can I do... Find out I, can't, charging I, I could do it. I could do a poll on the spot. So, uh, okay. What, what we want it to be, what are we charging right now? I would like to know, uh, yeah, if, if people are charging shop supplies, well, probably everybody's charging shop supplies, but I would like to know what those are. Are they one to three percent, four to six percent, seven to nine, or whatever? Just maybe some different categories there. Um, so I have been so surprised at the amount of people that don't charge shop supplies. Um, we're using shop supplies. I don't really care what your business is or what category of automotive that you've got. Uh, you're using shop supplies, whether it's a rags or tape or, or whatever it could be, cleaning supplies, uh, we're using them. So, um, so, and everybody's got different methods for this. Um, I just want to make sure people are charging them. Uh, similar um when i taught this class with jamil i found out he was charging more shop supplies than i was uh and so i'm like man maybe i need to go you know go back and check that so um so currently we're at nine percent um of labor is how we charge our shop supplies um you know some people cap it uh or or whatnot and we can if we have some huge huge jobs we can look at those individually but mostly across the board we're nine percent of labor um, and I got to be honest with the way that it's in there. I mean, basically the only place you see, and I'm not saying we're hiding from people or anything like that, but it just hasn't been an issue. I mean, people that go to dealers, they got, you know, EPA fees and people are used to those things at the bottom. Um, and it's just down there with your tax, you know, it's, I don't get the tax tax isn't for us goes to the state or whatever. Um, I just don't have anything, say anything about it. Uh, interestingly enough, the only people that I have had say anything about our shop supplies are dealers, which charge shop supplies. <laughs> so, you know, but they're looking for it, you know, so I had to do a dealer rate shop supply thing for this one dealer. But uh, point is, you need to be charging. Um, you need to be looking at what you are uh, spending for shop supplies. Make sure that, you know, you're covering it. Uh, disposable items, anything that you're using needs to be covered by that. That should not be coming out of profit or your bottom line in any shape, uh, shape or form. So um, super important. And again, I was blown away on the people that were not charging shop supplies. Um, we have two so, that responded 10% or more. Yeah. And that's, so that's where Jamil was. Uh, he was over times 12%. Um, and I think this three to seven is probably, that's what I would have expected to be the most common. Um, and I got to be honest, I don't know the, if you're on that lower spectrum, the three to five, I, you know, I just don't see that covering. It depends on what kind of business you're in for sure, you know, um, but I think that you're barely covering and it should be covering more than enough. Uh, it should even be potentially covering, you know, things like, um, you know, having a guy come in and do stuff to your floors, you know, whether it's polishing your floors like that. That's wear and tear on the floors. It, it can you can cover that stuff if you're charging the right amount of shop supplies. So it's it's wear and tear on equipment, equipment repair, things like that should be ultimately getting covered by your shop supplies. It is the goal anyway. So um, and again, I just don't get any kickback on it. Uh, and plenty of shops out there, well over ten percent, twelve, and and whatnot. So uh, something I'm looking at uh, for our shop as well. Yeah. Um, and there was one question that came in, do, uh, do you have a max on your shop supplies? But I guess that, that varies, I'm sure, but. Well, so I don't. So um, I will say that uh, we've had two jobs in the last two years that we've looked at the shop supplies and determined that we wanted to, to cap them um, just because the jobs were uh, multi six figure jobs and the shop supplies were a lot. Um, and we were using a lot of shop supplies on the jobs, but 
Um, being that we had some material lines, you know, laid out on the ticket, it wasn't just covering all the materials. Uh, we capped them on a case by case for those two jobs. Besides that, we don't cap them. We, we just, we, we let them roll. So, um, go to that next slide. I don't know if this slide made it on here. Um, oh, let's see. So, uh, no, I don't think it made it on here because this was one of Jamil's slides. Um, so, oh gosh, what was it? So in 2022, uh, both Jamil and I collected uh, well over 100,000 in shop supplies, I think is what it ended up being. I think he was, his was like 120, mine was like 135 or something like that. So $135,000. Now, that's not just pure profit, right? We're spending money for those things. Um, and Jamil did a really good job. I, I, I have this metric somewhere, but, but he was able to find his, um, where he was able to determine that he spent about 92. So he, he basically had an additional, you know, 30,000 ish, uh, of dollars coming in that, uh, from his shop supplies that didn't go out for shop supplies. So, you know, similar to spending 90 grand on, on incidentals, you know, an extra 30 K is, is nice, <laughs> you know, whether it's paying an employee a bonus or getting some for the shop or, you know, outings for the shop or give back to employees, whatever that may be, uh, any additional incoming that is not used for something you, I'm sure you can figure something out for it <laughs> for, for sure. So, um, so yeah, this is, uh, so yeah, you can kind of see, we've got our 9% uh, shop supplies on the bottom of our ticket. Um, so it just says it on the bottom of the category. Uh, the ticket and then yeah over on the right side uh, just at the bottom and i don't have anybody say anything about it like they get it like jobs we go that we use take materials they take disposables and stuff that you have to use um and I, again i thought it was really funny that the only person saying anything about it was a car dealer <laughs> so uh who, who charges similar for their work so um so yeah uh let's go to that next one lucas oh that's it i'm already done all right well um that went faster than I thought. Uh, I thought I was just going to be talking for hours and hours. Um, <laughs> we'll make sure to share uh, all the details afterwards. I do want to let everybody know that we will be sending out a follow-up email kind of a little later on in the week, just thanking everybody for coming and attending. Uh, we did record this session so that this can be shared with any folks or if you have any any uh, colleagues in the industry as well who own shops who, you know, regardless if they're using ShopMonkey, if they're not using ShopMonkey, that's, you know, we're just talking about what what that road to success looks like. And that's really the intent of this series. And so uh, we'll, we're more than happy to share that information. It'll be coming out a little later in this week. Um, with that being said, uh, Philip, Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for bringing uh, all this really great information to to the shops who have attended today. And uh, yeah, I thank you for me and the Shop Monkey team. And I don't know if you had any parting words, but yeah, we're we're gonna wrap it up. No man, I, I, thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate everybody sitting in on it. Um, and you know, I, I I always when I'm talking about any of this stuff, I. I you know, I try to like, this isn't an infomercial, like, you know, that's why I say things like, hey, this isn't perfect, you know, but um, I, I'm, I don't work for Shop Monkey that they just helped, helped my business so much. I've used just about every software option out there. Uh, and it has by far been made the biggest impact on us from a profit and efficiency standpoint point um so i'm just like man i want to i want to tell other people like me that are have struggled you know through through this to try to you know get find something that works um and so i'm always happy to do it so uh, i hope that came through that uh you know this is all just coming from i'm down here in the trenches every day you know we're working in this and and i'm uh i'm, I'm in this every day all day so hopefully it helped you know um get people uh to you know take the next steps to, to grow the business yeah yeah absolutely well, Philip, once again, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Uh, maybe we'll see you back again in the future for some for, for some additional sessions. I'm sure we'll talk to sure. Justin and, and, and yeah, folks man. and see what we can come up with. So uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we, we hope you have a great week. Uh, enjoy the weekend. That's a little later on the week, but enjoy that when it comes around. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. We welcome you to attend our future sessions. We'll be sending out communication in the next following few weeks. Uh, and yeah, look forward to seeing everyone on our next session. Thank you once again. Have a good one.